Hello, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are two of us here from our DAV Personal Philanthropy Programs team. I'm Judy LaSweeney, and I'm based out of our national headquarters in Greater Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky. I've been with DAV for 25 years. It's been such an honor. And uh, I'm also going to introduce Robbie G. Berghese here, who is one of our six regional directors based out of their homes around the country and they are also serving our supporters uh, in any way they can in all the ways we'll be talking about today. So with that, Robbie will say a few words. Thanks, Judy. Well, he hello, everyone. My name is Robbie. As uh, Judy had mentioned, I'm the Central Regional Director uh, as part of our personal philanthropy programs. I'm located right outside of Chicago, Illinois, and have been with DAV now for uh, a little over a year. And so it's great to be with you virtually. Um, it's been a real joy of mine to be able to work on behalf of our veterans uh, who have served our country. So thank you uh, for your service and uh, thank you for being here with us today. We look forward to having a great conversation. Okay, uh, well, with that, I'll give an overview of what we'll cover. Uh, we'll be talking about ways to give that do not cost anything now uh, during your lifetime. We also have gifts that would enable people to receive a fixed income for as long as they live, plus tax advantages. Uh, we'll talk about how to name DV in your will. It's very simple. Uh, and also we can cover easy 15 minute estate gifts that simply involve a update to a beneficiary form. Uh, separately, we have a new program that enables our members and supporters to create a free will online, very easy. We'll tell you about that. Uh, and then we'll end up talking about ways that you may not think about giving, but are really smart tax-wise, make a big difference to DAV, might save on your taxes, really. Uh, and um, just good things to know about. You can also tell your members and friends about them too. So, all right, with that, we'll move on to the next slide. Uh, so here we're just talking, making sure people know that we're friendly people uh, who just love to hear from you. That's the whole point for you to get to know us. Uh, uh, but we'd love to talk to you, any of your members and friends. We listen to everybody's life stories and learn why they care. Uh, often we're talking even to children of veterans who know how much we've done for their parents and are grateful and want to give it back in any way. Uh, so we just work with people, help them make the right gift for them, and um, try to educate too about new ways of giving that you'll hear about today. All right, well, with that, Robbie will handle the next two slides. Thanks, Judy. And um, just so we have a better view of our slides, uh, Judy and I are gonna come off camera here so we can uh, get uh, kind of the, the best view of our presentation. Uh, well, our, our personal philanthropy program uh, team covers the entire country. Uh, along with Judy and I, we have a, a regional director uh, that covers multiple states uh, for each part of the country that we're in. And as you can see, we are broken up into regions. And uh, listed here are my colleagues across the United States that can help with questions about uh, estate giving uh, or current giving or really anything related to DAV philanthropy, and uh, there'll be a great point of contact for you uh, locally. Uh, as you can see, uh, if you take a look at the corresponding map here, and uh, you can find the regional director in your area based on the corresponding color. Uh, for example, in the dark blue up in the Northeast states from uh, Maine down to Virginia, we have our Northeast regional director, Jason Belland. Uh, and uh, just below that, uh, in the light blue states from North Carolina down to Florida, you'll you'll find our Southeast Regional Director, Teresa Long Pascal. And I encourage you to go back and look at uh, where the, and find where the other regional directors are in your area. And uh, please do be in touch with them. Uh, I think the regional directors would be really happy to hear from you. And uh, we are more than happy to answer any questions or to be of any resource to you here. And uh, so I'm gonna go to hand it over again to Judy as we continue. Okay. Uh, well, just to give you a context of who we are, you'll recognize our team's work by way of these sample DAV magazine articles that run in every DAV magazine. Uh, we love the stories about real people who are making gifts, like what we'll tell you about. And we love to point out how much we want to thank and honor these individuals for their wonderful gifts. 
which are making all the difference in what we can do for disabled veterans now and in the future. So with our next slide, our simple message is just please consider naming DAV as a beneficiary of your will or trust, a financial or investment account, uh, an insurance policy or retirement account, and there's our legal name and address, uh, plus it's really helpful and best if people would include our tax ID number, and then let us know so that we can thank you during your lifetime. With our next slide, uh, with estate giving and who we prioritize, uh, estate gifts cost nothing during anyone's lifetime that just makes such a difference in the future. Uh, most people underestimate what assets they do have. People think they don't have an estate, but they really do by the time they start to think about, oh, they have insurance and, you know, an investment account at Edward Jones or their house. So, and I love to say that nearly everyone can think about an estate gift, large or small. Uh, not everyone can think about making a large gift during their lifetime, but gifts uh, through your estate plans are just making an amazing difference in our work. So, but we always focus on longtime donors. So many of them might have been making ten to twenty dollar gifts over their lifetime, but then they do something amazing for us through their wills or other estate plans. And then we never want to overlook women because uh, so often they're the ones who carry out those uh, charitable intentions for the couple. You now they might outlive their spouse. So uh, we're all about each of these things we're mentioning now today. But uh, the next slide, just to give you an idea with our bequest income increasing over time, it's been just an amazing thing to see this growth. Uh, so I started at DAB in 1995 and we were just beginning a plan giving program that year. Uh, and we started to do letters to market bequests, tell our members and supporters that they could do this. Uh, then we started doing those ads in the DAV magazine. So over the years, it was incremental, you know, going up one to 2,000 a year. Uh, but then starting uh, around 2015, we started to see years where we were receiving uh, bequest income in the low 20 million range. Uh, 2019, we shot up to $30 million. It was by far our biggest year by several years, by several million dollars. But um, and as another point of pride, I learned recently that our bequest income is far and above what the American Legion and the VFW typically receive each year in bequests. Uh, both organizations have more members than DAV, but the American Legion typically receives less than a million each year in bequests, and the VFW might receive about three to four million each year. Uh, but we have focused on plain giving for the past 25 years marketing bequests and other estate gifts, and it shows. So with our next slide, uh, this shows our, our average of bequest giving for the last three years. Uh, it averaged in the low to mid 20s those three years. Uh, so uh, our net revenue as represented by bequests here, as you can see, is almost half. So what we can spend from what people give us, that's our net revenue. Uh, bequest income is approaching half of our overall revenue. So it's just so important to us uh, and we're grateful. And uh, bequest giving is always the most low cost way of raising money. And so that's all the more reason you see it um, representing a very large chunk of what we can actually spend to help veterans. So, all uh, right, and then, uh, Robbie, that's the next slide. Uh, yes, I wanted to share uh, about some Giving USA st statistics. Uh, Giving USA is a foundation that uh, publishes data and trends about uh, charitable giving within the United States. And every year they produce an annual report on philanthropy in the US. Uh, and in their most uh, recent publication, they reported that Americans gave over $449 billion in 2019 to charitable institutions, a really incredible giving. And uh, what's uh, really interesting to note is that the majority of charitable giving comes from individuals. Uh, as this graph notes, uh, nationwide, uh, gifts from individuals account for 69%, over $300 billion in giving, uh, with another 10% of that uh, coming from individuals through their bequests. 
so this conversation is being had all over and um, it is uh, really a way for people to give uh, and leave uh, a really uh, lasting legacy to the organizations that they care about. Um, uh, you'll also see that 17% uh, of uh, the giving comes from uh, foundations, so which also includes family foundations. So really it's accounting for uh, even more individual uh, support. Um, uh, what's interesting also is that 5% you know, comes from corporations, whereas you, know, you think of these kind of large multinational corporations that are uh, probably able to give quite a bit more, uh, but uh, really uh, the astounding and really kind of a, a encouraging thing to see is that individuals are the ones that are coming in and stepping in and really giving um, significantly to uh, the charities that they care about. And so uh, we're, uh, Judy's gonna talk next about um, someone that cared really deeply about DAV and uh, decided to help uh, leave a, le a legacy in their own way. All right, well, uh, I was working at DAV at this time. We uh, learned in 2007 that we were soon to receive our largest bequest of all time, still our largest bequest of all time, uh, Doris and Hector uh, Di Stefano had created a charitable remainder trust way back in 1992 to benefit eight organizations, including the DAV Charitable Service Trust. Uh, so that gave them an income for as long as she lived, then uh, he outlived her. Uh, the income continued to him. Uh, and after he passed away, eight charities, including DAB, received $31 million each. Uh, so uh, it can be really transformational for charities to receive gifts of this size. It's made a big difference. Uh, uh, and then also we want to emphasize that our typical supporter is giving bequests of five, 10, 50 million, oh, sorry, 50,000 at a time. Oh gosh, this is very atypical, a multi-million dollar bequest, but it goes to show that if you're out there marketing, an amazing uh, number of gifts can come in that are making just a great difference. So, all right, and then the next slide, uh, gets back to showing you what our sample articles look like. Um, here are two from the last year or two, including one that was this year, uh, Donald Hawk, just a very ordinary guy who actually lives in Cincinnati, but we never knew him. And he named several organizations in his estate plan, same thing, you know, wonderful gifts. We'd just love to tell their stories and portray that these gifts are coming from, you know, people next door doing amazing things. Uh, so after people learn about our work through those DV magazines and other marketing, uh, the next slide shows the estate giving folder that we send, and it also talks about other ways to give, like what we're talking about today. Uh, and the back of it has several pages of organizational material uh, for people to make note of, you know, if they have a burial plot somewhere, a safety deposit box, um, any financial account information, just great information to help get you organized before seeing an attorney and uh, helpful pages to leave for your executor or family member who's managing things. Uh, next slide shows information about how we extend appreciation to our estate gift donors during their lifetime. Um, we honor people through the Guardian Society, that's our legacy society. Uh, and it kind of captures that these supporters are guardians of our strong future. Mark Burgess sends a special thank you letter along with a certificate of appreciation, a special lapel pin, and a window decal. Through the Guardian Society, we can also help pay tribute to a loved one, uh, living or deceased, as we have done here with Mary Smith, whose veteran husband had already passed away. Uh, her certificate indicates that uh, her gift is a memory of her husband, William Smith. Again, we always want to thank people during their lifetimes for gifts that we'll benefit from later. Uh, we realize that for some people, their plans may change over time or they may, may need all that they have to support themselves in their later years, but we still want to be sure we thank and honor people now uh, while they're still with us for their wonderful intentions. Okay, and then Robbie will handle the next two slides. Yes, so, so there are a number of different ways to include DAV in your will or your trust, including 
uh, leaving a specific percentage of your estate. For example, you can decide to leave 10% of the value of uh, your estate to DAV. And a percentage designation is often the best format for a charitable bequest because it allows a charity to benefit from any estate growth during the donor's lifetime. Uh, there's also, of course, the ability to set aside a specific dollar amount, say $10,000, or even certain properties, such as a home, an art collection, or something else. This is the most kind of popular form of charitable bequest, but it can sometimes have drawbacks because, uh, for example, if the value of an estate uh, or if a home decreases significantly or property depreciates in value, uh, the, the gift uh, doesn't have as much uh, impact as, as, uh, as other times. There are other, uh, other options, including a contingency bequest, which is a gift that takes effect only if a, a primary beneficiary or beneficiaries of the bequest uh, predecease uh, the donor. Uh, finally, there's also the remainder beneficiary, which is a gift uh, or of a portion of the remainder of the donor's assets after all the bequests have been made, as well as debts and taxes have been paid. And uh, you know, all that being said, from the charity and donor standpoint, um, it's often better to name beneficiaries using percentages as gift values to stay true to bequest intentions over time. Because again, uh, the value of uh, an, an estate can fluctuate, uh, for example, with inflation or a number of other factors. So uh, our next slide talks a little bit about what um, the bequest language actually looks like. And we often give uh, this information to uh, donors who are considering uh, including DAV in their estate plan. And this is some um, uh, language we uh, often provide. It's very simple, uh, it accommodates for uh, the bequest that we talked about, whether it's a certain dollar amount, uh, whether it's a specific property, uh, or even a certain percentage of the estate. Uh, we recommend that this language uh, for sure be shared with your attorney as they uh, talk with you and draft your bequest provisions. and. Uh, a couple of notable things that we do include uh, in here are our address as well as our tax ID number, uh, which really kind of uh, specifies uh, who we are as an organization. Uh, and so next, uh, Judy's going to talk about um, uh, how we uh, some new programs uh, where that can help you develop uh, a bequest or a trust. Okay, uh, freewill.com backslash DAB here. Uh, this gives you an idea of what it looks like if you actually do go online. But as the headline indicates, it's a free way and a new way for our members and other supporters to create a free will uh, just to make sure they have some sort of final plan in place. So many people do not. Uh, anyone can go to this website and create a simple will in about 20 minutes using this really simple online tool. Uh, but as a word of caution, most people should also see an attorney who ensure all of their assets are carefully noted and planned, and many people would be well served to consider a trust in addition to a will. Uh, but we always like to say that a free will is positively better than no will at all, uh, this is just a new opportunity we can tell our members and supporters about, and uh, by using this new online tool, it can also help you organize your thoughts and plans before seeing an attorney. Okay, then next slide. Uh, I indicated earlier that we talk about the very simple ways to include DAV uh, in your estate plans that don't involve updating your will. Uh, so, so many assets fall outside of the will uh, because they're governed by the beneficiary designations that you make. Uh, so examples of that are retirement plans listed here, you know, your 401k while you're still working, 403bs, and after you retire, those uh, then convert to an individual retirement account. Uh, your investment or financial accounts, I mentioned Edward Jones, all the ways people might have their, uh, their assets invested, uh, banking and checking accounts and life insurance policies. So those are normally uh, governed and passed down by way of beneficiary designations uh, and those supersede or trump what might be stated in the will. So it's very important to keep those up to date. And those designations can be made in uh, percentage increments. So, you know, 10% to one charity and another, you know, 25% for each child, whatever you might want to do. Uh, but it's always good to know that exists. And it's just so simple and very fast. So, all right. And with the next slide, um, the reason we emphasize 
all these ways that assets pass is that all in all, you know, people are moving towards trust to some degree. That's part of what's happening here. But this uh, slide captures that wills alone are not very common, not as common at least as what they used to be. And there's many reasons for that, including uh, you can now pass down uh, real estate to heirs uh, in 18 states using a simple transfer on death deed. Uh, increasingly, those are popular and catching on. Additional states are allowing it. Uh, and then so many people have mutual funds and IRA accounts. Those were not common, didn't exist really until recent decades. Uh, and so those are, ass are assets governed by those beneficiary designations. And all in all, you know, the majority of people's wealth these days are in assets like those. So there ends up not being all that much left to place in the will. Uh, so we try to make sure people know about all these other easy ways to give. And, uh, and uh, all in all, uh, you know, the wills are important, but uh, not the be all end all anymore like people used to think. Okay, next slide. All right, uh, so for anybody who is thinking about being charitable, it uh, can be people who don't have children, obviously they're obvious, but uh, anybody can think about naming a charity in their will uh, or, or these other possibilities. Uh, retirement assets, if you're thinking about doing anything for a charity like DAV, uh, retirement assets, if they're left to a non-spouse heir, if they're left to children, for example, they're heavily taxed, whereas a tax-exempt charity like DAV would benefit from the entire retirement asset uh, at the end. So if you are thinking about being charitable, consider uh, an estate gift for a charity from retirement assets first and foremost, and then leave other assets to other family members. Just something to think about and always consult with a financial or tax advisor or your attorney. Okay, and Robbie will handle the next few slides. Yep, well, we've uh, just talked about uh, giving through retirement assets, but now we're gonna take a look uh, at other ways you can make a significant plan gift uh, to DAV. Now, the first type of uh, gift that we're going to talk about is a charitable gift annuity. Uh, and similar to a bequest, this is a gift that uh, would benefit DAV after your lifetime. But uh, what's interesting about this is that it would also be able to provide fixed payments to you during your lifetime. A uh, charitable gift annuity, or CGA uh, as a short form, is can be established with a minimum of $10,000. And you have to be at least 60 years of age to participate, uh, at least at DAV. It's, uh, it's important to note that these are our minimums and other charities may have different minimum ages and funding amounts, but uh, gift annuities can be funded with cash, stock, or mutual funds and can be set up for one or two annuitants, uh, typically uh, for a person and their spouse. And just to give you a quick uh, look at how uh, CGAs work, uh, a gift annuity, uh, typically a donor signs an annuity agreement with the charity and they initially make a lump sum donation, whether it's cash or stock, uh, or, and the donor receives an immediate charitable tax deduction for that gift. Uh, that donation is then invested uh, with the charitable gift annuity, and, and the donor receives payments on a fixed schedule for the remainder of their life, uh, or uh, their spouse's life as well, if it's a two-life annuity. And these payments can come quarterly, uh, they can come annually, and uh, even monthly. And finally, at the end of the donor's life, the, charitable, the charity receives the balance of those uh, invested funds. So it's an incredible gift uh, uh, that is uh, offering uh, kind of fixed payments throughout the life of the donor. Uh, the terms and rates uh, of a charitable gift annuity kind of vary uh, based on a number of factors, uh, primarily uh, on age. As you can see in this chart, someone who is at the age of 65 would receive an annual rate of 4.2%. And these rates are based on yearly published rates uh, by the Council on Gift Annuities. And um, based on a $10,000 gift annuity, the 60, uh, you can see that the 65-year-old donor would receive payments of $420 a year. Uh, and again, those can come quarterly, those can come annually. And uh, with a significant amount of that payment being tax-free uh, with an immediate charitable deduction of $3,155. And if you contrast that to someone who 
uh, is of 85 years of age, um, they would receive a rate of 7.6% and would have proportionately higher payments and a higher charitable deduction, uh, an immediate charitable deduction as well. And uh, any of our regional staff can talk to you about uh, uh, these rates and do kind of a personal calculation for you. So please feel free to reach out to any of the uh, regional directors or to Judy as well. Another great way um, to give is through gifts of stock or mutual funds. And uh, typically uh, to give through them, uh, stock has to be owned uh, or mutual funds has to be owned for at least a year. Uh, but it's a great way to make a tax-wise gift to DAV. Uh, again, because of a charity's nonprofit uh, status, a gift of stock can be received in its full value. And the donor is able to avoid capital gains and make a significantly larger gift rather uh, than having a donor sell their stock and, and, and have to pay taxes on those capital gains. Uh, it's important to note that, uh, that stocks and mutual funds do need to be transferred directly to the charity, so you can't sell your stock and then give uh, the proceeds, uh, otherwise you uh, won't get the tax benefits there. And we do have uh, information on how to do that, uh, 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 how to do that efficiently, so we can give you stock uh, gift instruction. So feel, again, feel free to reach out to us. But really, it's a win-win for the donor and DAV because DAV gets uh, an incredible uh, charitable gift, and the donor is able to give uh, sometimes even more than they would be able to do with a regular cash gift. Uh, finally, a, a charitable, uh, a qualified charitable distribution is another excellent option to make a, a significant gift to DAV. Uh, donors are able to transfer up to $100,000 a year to a charity directly from their IRA. And uh, similar to the stock gifts, the charity would not have to pay any taxes on this transfer because of uh, their nonprofit status. Uh, and this is a particularly good option for those donors um, who can take uh, who can start taking distributions from their IRA at 70 and a half, and then are required to take a minimum distribution at uh, 72 and older. And a making gift through their IRA would actually help avoid uh, an increasable taxable income and make a generous uh, charitable gift at the same time. Uh, similar to stocks, these gifts do need to be made uh, or transferred directly from the IRA to a qualified charity, rather than having a distribution check made out to you and then giving it to the charity. So. Uh, be sure to talk to your tax advisor uh, about that. Uh, but we also have detailed instructions how you could do this, and we'd be happy to talk with you and how to make that transfer. Uh, finally, an important thing to note, uh, in, in 2020, due to the CARES Act, uh, required minimum distributions will be waived. So just something to keep in mind as you're considering um, making a QCD. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Judy uh, for some final thoughts here. Okay. Uh, well, the information with this within this presentation is just to get you thinking. But again, we always welcome your calls and emails, any questions you might have. Uh, we would love to talk to you about any of the points that we've touched on today. Uh, and then our next slide tells how to reach myself and Robbie. Uh, there's my contact information. Uh, I'm the primary contact for estate giving and gift annuities, but our regional people are definitely uh, able to help there too. Uh, and there's our toll-free number. You'll see that in the DAV magazine and our email address, giftplanning at DAV.org. Uh, and we have a website with many helpful related articles that you can uh, read through. So just go to DAV.giftplans.org to learn more. Uh, and you can actually run your own charitable gift annuity illustrations there as well if you would like to uh, uh, play around with that tool. Okay, so, all right, I think we're going to go back to our web cameras. Well, I, I, again, thank you for being with us today. I wanted to offer, again, uh, just uh, our contact information, uh, and uh, please feel free to reach out to Judy or I, or really any of the other regional directors. Uh, we'd be happy to be in touch and talk more with you. Usually we have some uh, time with you if we were live to be able to ask questions and interact with you, but uh, uh, at least uh, we want to make ourselves available to you if you do have any questions. And uh, so on behalf of uh, you know, uh, my, my colleagues and Judy, thank you again uh, for your service to our country. Uh, we recognize that you support uh, your fellow veterans and their families in many different ways, including uh, through your generous support, as well as your membership uh, with DAV. And for that, we are deeply grateful and uh, we look forward to, to more opportunities to, to partner and uh, serve alongside you. Yeah, well, thank you again for being with us and uh, just call it anytime. We love to hear from you. That's what we do.
All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.